Hi, I'm Rob, and in this Gems of War video, I'm going to show a super aggressive, mega deadly Fountain of Stars team. It's a lot of fun to use. Now, the Fountain of Stars is probably one of the most underrated mythics in the game. You just don't see it in that many teams, and I don't know why, because it's absolutely fantastic. If you've got a team that is heavy on mana use of color purple, then this thing is pretty much unbeatable in the whole game. That generating stacks of purple is absolutely nuts. This should be called Fountain of Purple because that basically is what happens. It is available in the Soul Forge at the moment and was indeed my recommended mythic of the week. If you're going to craft a mythic, converts five green gems to purple potions and all brown gems to skulls and cleanses all fey allies at the same time. The two traits that, which are the best ones are reduce damage from skulls by 50% and a 15% chance to bless all allies when my turn begins. So how can we use this? We're going to get a load of purple. So we're in a very purple heavy team here. So um, a user called Slazy1 asked in a comment on a previous video how Wrath Aemon would work with the Fountain of Stars. So I'm going to show you with this team because this is a team that I had ready anyway. It just works absolutely superbly. And Zulgoth and Wrath Aemon are absolutely a beast together. Because Zulgoth kills somebody outright, burns and freezes the remaining enemies and then creates 12 skulls. Wrath Aemon then creates a mix of 24 purple and skulls, which is absolutely superb because any remaining skulls that Zul leaves, leaves over, you can cast Wrath Aemon and create even more purple and skulls. And it gets worse because those skulls are going to be causing triple skull damage. We are in Slayer class for this. Get that bottom trait in Slayer class, Fire Blade, deal triple skull damage to burning enemies. Other stuff here is really good as well, like Swift Curse, Death Mark, a random enemy at the start is really cool. But this is mainly all about that a triple skull damage. Now, the other thing that's really cool about this weapon as well is it explodes gems. That is good on its own. And if your magic is high enough, you will cause a near board wipe every single time. Now, the reason why that's relevant is the Fountain of Stars is not going to be 100% reliable. There will be times when you cast this and those green gems to purple potions don't always align. Most of the time they will. Sometimes there'll be some purple potions left over or it misses entirely. That means you can cast this. And when you cast this and you explode those gems, that will take out those potions. And those potions will then generate tons of mana, even if the game will sort of try to stop you from doing it, if you know what I mean. So the game has no choice. You will get those potions. And you will charge up Zulgoth and Rafaemon and then just go nuts with them, creating skulls everywhere and obliterating the opponent. Now the banner for this is the Dark Fey banner, plus two purple, plus one yellow, minus one green. And we are in a Slayer class, as just shown. So let's take it out there and see what it does. All right, let's dive into a Explore 12 then. Let's see what we can do. Skull Fountain. There's going to be a lot of skulls on this and a lot of death. We are looking to get the weapon up straight away, but we won't say no to a four match like that. All that. Right, there's our brown. I found if stars got up first, so we'll cast that then. Here comes the purple. Zul is ready. You can collect these other purple first. Binzo there, there. Zul will kill someone, set fire to everybody else, and then the triple skull damage will start. Now we can cast our Wrath Aemon, a mix of 24 purple gems and skulls. Skull hits are going to be hideous for the opposition. Next up, Baby Yaga. Right, no initial brown, but we'll have a slice of that. Take that purple. Brown or purple, please. We cast our Obsidian Libram, generate loads of colours that we want. Let's go for it, the Fountain of Stars. When you get ones like this, if you can, create more, um, make a match with purple, with more than one potion, it will actually create more of that colour, so that is always a thing to do, if you can. Not got any alignment right now, so not perfect. It'd be cool if we can get our Obsidian Libram up, so I'm going to leave them that skull hit. 
Now, when I cast this, this is going to explode those potions and generate ridiculous amounts of mana for the team. Here we go. Zool is ready. Let's get rid of him because he's annoying. Let's cast our Wrath Aemon. Loads of purple and skulls. Didn't need to do it, but hey, it's fun. So yeah, pretty cool team this. And a red weapon away from being Guild Wars viable. Haven't looked into the red weapons yet. This just seemed like a good choice. That's a lot of green to start with. That's right, but our Fountain of Stars is up already. Didn't get the match there, but this is where Obsidian Libram is so good. We are guaranteed to get insane purple from this. There we go. See ya. Bye. Later. On your bike. So yeah, very good. Very reliable. It's, I only say very reliable because it can go wrong if your Fountain of Stars does cast and you don't get anything. You can set up the opposition for a load of purple, so... That is something to be wary of. No team is absolutely perfect. It's all in the stars sometimes, how well the uh, game aligns what your intentions were. You're not always going to get the drops that you want. Sometimes the game will just say, nope, that's not happening. Like then, now it's going to... See, the AI didn't decided not to take it then. The AI is a bit daft like that, which is actually in our favour. Now, can I get a double out of this? Yes, I can. When I match this purple... To here, we'll get a double effect from the potions, which gives us loads of what we want. Now let's get rid of uh, her. She's got a funny face. Go, Wrath Aemon. Lots of damage, lots of skulls. Don't need to do that. And the mini boss. Any brown or purple would be nice, but we've got a nice Mana Surge red there, that will do, I'll take it. No brown or purple though, this is the only thing that can be slow sometimes when the game doesn't give you the colours that you particularly want. Better do, here we go. See they've worked against us this time, this is see how it can go sometimes, but now, like I said, the game doesn't always do it right so here we can actually get guaranteed one here but i'll grab this one first this is a bit of reassurance become more purple all right let's cast our fcd brim finally got going so that was a bit of a slower one that time that's the way things go sometimes take them out as well Finish off, didn't even need to cast our Wrath Aemon that time. And the mythic boss, Kurundara. Lots of green at the start of these games at the moment, that was something I just noticed. Might leave in that skull hit because I would rather get some stuff towards, towards my weapon because there's hardly any purple or, or brown on the board at all. It's the thing you see, no matter how good your team may be sometimes. Just said a moment ago, it's all in the lap of the gods. How well the game decides what it's going to drop. If the gems don't drop in your favour, not a lot you can do. Come on, Wrath Aemon. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. A very enjoyable team indeed. I like it. So yeah, Fountain of Stars, underrated and mythic for me, as I said at the start. It's um, underused, but when particularly when you want purple, it's absolutely fantastic mana generator. One of the best out there. So absolutely superb. Really, really good. That is the video. If you enjoyed it, why not bash that like and subscribe button and feel free to share the video, tell your guild, other Gems of War players, that kind of thing. But thanks for watching and I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.